Hey, what's happening, guys? I thought it was time to get back to an Arduino project because they are the most true to my heart. So what I've got for you today, can you guess? Well, you're probably already reading the title, so you don't have to guess. It's just a simple reaction time game. And you can see we just have four components on the board. We have an Arduino Nano. We have a uh, I squared C controlled OLED display, little small OLED. We have this stoplight looking thing, but I'm only using the green LED. I, di I didn't have time to put in all three LEDs, so sorry. And then we have our switch. The switch is connected between ground and a pin. In this case, it is connected to pin 8. The only other thing you have to worry about is pin 5 here is the LED. And you hook up your uh, OLED with VCC and ground and then... Uh, data goes to pin 4, and clock goes to pin 5. Now that's it. You might be wondering why there is no um, resistor on our button. Well, I'm using the internal 10K pull-up on the Arduino. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to plug it in. It'll go through a little thing here. And when it is done with that, it will begin a timer. When the timer gets to the end, the light will turn green, and we'll get our reading there. So here we go. Our reaction time. Whoop. 178 milliseconds. 287 milliseconds. Two hundred and sixty seven milliseconds. One hundred and sixty. The best I've ever got is one hundred and thirty seven milliseconds. But I think this would be a neat project to play with your kids or grandkids. You know, you can tell them, put your hand down here. When the light turns green, you got to slap the button. That gave me four hundred ninety three milliseconds. So it's super simple. Again, all we're doing is we're bringing out power and ground from the Arduino data and clock to the screen, our switch, and the LED. Let's go over to the computer and I'll show you the code. All right, let's take a look at the code here for the reaction time game. It's pretty simple. All right, what you see here, these three include lines, they are simply uh, setting up the I squared C interface for our display. So we have wire, Adafruit, GFX, which is a, uh, a graphic system, which we really don't need but I always put it in there when I do an OLED. And then the uh, the actual driver itself. Then this uh, define OLED reset four, it's telling it pin four is used for reset, so don't put anything on pin four. Adafruit SSD 1306, that is our driver, and we are going to call it display with a function of the OLED reset here. Then we're gonna set up some variables. We have a constant, in. Uh, integer which is led pin equals five so our led is on pin five we have switch pin equals pin eight and then we have our delays minimum delay is a second maximum delay is five seconds then we're going to come down here to our setup we're going to say pin mode led pin is output so that needs to be on output so it'll turn the led on and then pin mode switch pin is an input with an internal 10k pull up that just means you don't need to use a resistor it has its own internal resistor Serial begin 9600. I use that for debugging. It's very useful and I always have it. It will allow you to bring up the serial monitor, which isn't active right now, and observe your variables or whatever. If the program's not doing what you want, you can get it back on track. Now we're going to set up our display. Display begin SSD 1306 switch APVCC. And then this is the important one. This is we're using the Adafruit driver. If you are not using the Adafruit um, OLED, you need to change this hex address to 0x3c from the 0x3d it was, or it won't work. Display display that shows what is in the display buffer. Wait a half second, clear the display. Now we're going to seed our random number generator, random seed, analog read zero. So make sure there's nothing on pin zero. There's going to be a floating value on there. You know, it could be anywhere from uh, what? 0 to 1024. Then we're just going to wait a second before starting everything. 
and we're going to generate our random delay. So integer delay time equals random somewhere in between the minimum and the maximum delays and then our delay will be set to the random time. Once we reach the random time, we will turn on the LED digital right LED pin high. As soon as that happens, it starts counting. So we're going to use an unsigned long variable called start time. We're going to count the millisecond since that LED turned on. So while digital read switch pin equals high, that means we're going to wait for it to be pressed. Unsign long end time. So that is our uh, the end of the count. Then we'll turn the LED off once we press the button and we'll calculate it. So we'll say unsigned long reaction time equals end time minus start time. And that will give us our delay in milliseconds or our reaction time in milliseconds. It's printing everything to the serial monitor. And then we're going to bring it down here and we're going to display it to the OLED. So we're going to say clear the display, set our text size, set our color. Put the cursor in the upper left hand corner, clear the display again, display print with a line return reaction, display print time, then we're going to print our reaction time. You see there's a space here. So after that it's going to be that and then it'll say milliseconds and then it'll show it. Then we're going to wait for two seconds. And then it's going to tell you to get ready to go again and the whole thing starts all over again. And that's all there is to the code. So what's nice about this, at least I think so, is I left in the code for the serial monitor. So if you don't have an I squared C uh, display, you don't have to use it. The uh, data will be displayed on the serial monitor. Just make sure you set your baud rate to 9600 and you'll, uh, you'll be good to go. This is kind of fun. It's a simple enough project that you can build it in a couple of minutes with your kids or your grandkids and it doesn't take much just about everything you find here a switch an led and a nano or you can use an uno or whatever you have can be found in your basic arduino kit starter kit so a simple project anybody can do there will be a link to the code down below i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe a big thanks to all the patrons if you're not a patron there will be a link down below but it is patreon.com slash learn electronics. And uh, I need you. I need you to keep the channel going. So thanks everybody who supported me so far. I couldn't do it without you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.